Hi everyone, my name is Jess and I am a thriftaholic. I have a thrift haul from Goodwill. I went to their nifty $1.50 day. All of their clothing is just $1.50 unless it's marked up and then it's half off. So, I sell everything between clothing, accessories, hard goods, vintage, modern. I love vintage. It's where my heart is. And let's get started. I sell multiple platforms as well, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and get my hard goods out of the way. I love selling Christmas. I will pick it up year round, but it's mainly put out at our thrift stores during Christmas time. So I got, this is Department 56, which is collectible and certain pieces can be valuable. Now this is Mr. Fuzzy Wigs. Now I did some research before I started recording because he looked familiar. I, at first I thought he was Scrooge, but he's actually... Um, Scrooge uh, was his apprentice for Charles Dickens' novel, uh, Christmas Carol. So, Mr. Fezziwigs, which 20-inch tall porcelain. Um, his body is soft, but his head and face and legs are porcelain. Um, Mr. Fezziwigs was known for being a good, generous man who could balance his work, but also his play. So, he was... Four dollars, and he looks to be in mint condition. Clark, get out. Okay, so he is four dollars. Now I looked online, and all I currently saw was one thirty-five dollars or best offer on eBay. But I'm going to list this for fifty dollars, and I cross post. Um, all of my items, most of my items. So this will go on all the other platforms and I, I feel confident that I can get 50. Now, Christmas items, if you have them, list them today. I have several items backlogged that I have not listed and I'm going to hold off on everything else until I have all the Christmas listed. But I keep picking it up so it keeps getting pushed back. So, there's one guy, Mr. Fuzzy Wigs. Okay, the next one now this, I do not believe it's vintage. I believe it's more of a modern piece. Mr. Christmas, I will show you their font and that's like their labeling for their items. I love selling Mr. Christmas. I normally pick up their 90s pieces and a little bit about Mr. Christmas. So I previously discussed this company and I love selling their pieces between 50 and $125. A lot of times they're musical, animated, whatever. Um, I went to MrChristmas.com because I believe this is more of a modern piece. It's like an indoor, outdoor. It's really cute. And I believe it's factory sealed, but it is modern. I went to MrChristmas.com and I could not find anything remotely similar. I went on Google and typed in, could not find anything remotely similar. I paid $5 for this and I'm not sure what I will list it at. It's nothing special. It just goes outside. It does have a timer on it. So I'll probably list it for $50. And the last hard goods is actually behind me. I will bring them up so you can see them closer. So this was near the end of my thrift trip. These was these um, handmade dolls were with the Christmas section. And I believe they are I don't know, 80s, maybe early 90s, handmade. She's got cute little poinsettias and hollies in her hair. And her face is hand, it's not paint, it's um, those fabric markers. So she's well-dressed. She has even wire glasses and booties. Nice little apron. And then Santa glasses keep falling off I think I'm going to uh, hot glue them on so they sit properly on his face but how cute are their little faces and their um, hair is nice you know he's fully equipped with his boots super cute I paid three dollars a piece for these and I think I can get I'm gonna ask $75 and yeah so six dollars in the 75 would be great but like I said I need to get these listed today. Today's currently Thanksgiving. Um, we're staying home and these bags have been sitting in my living room 
for two days and we're trying to also decorate for Christmas so I want to get every all this stuff processed so I can get my house back together because it's a little crazy right now so those are my hard goods now let's move on to clothing now if you saw my previous video that was posted two days ago I had a thrift with me so you could see what I pass on and what I pick up currently I am trying to get at least $30 net per item I passed on tons of bread and butter there's so much money to be made in a thrift store but get what works for you just because you're seeing things that I pick up doesn't mean it works for you um, I used to pick up all the loft and Maurice's because I get it so cheap I either get items at the bins or I get them on their sale days when it's like a dollar or a dollar fifty most of the time however I have noticed that when you pay up for an item if you are confident that it will sell and that there are there is research with sold comps I will pay up for an item okay so enough of me jabbering let's get going okay so here we have a satin animal print leopard cheetah whatever you want to call it um shirt from the 90s it's actually my fashion bag but like I said um, brands necessarily don't matter unless it's a sought after brand so this has a pocket here and it's actually a sleep shirt but I will tell you sleep shirts that look like blouses are actually trending um, people will knot them right here or they will tuck them into their high-waisted jeans or pants and it looks so cute so when I go to list this I'm not going to just hang on a hanger like this. I'm going to knot it and style it and I will probably either model it myself or do a flat lay. So this one, um, I'll probably just get 30 for. Okay. I've gone back and forth and I have finally decided that I'm going to send in pieces to thread up because my basement is overflowing. My sanity is going out the window. I need to get rid of these pieces. Even if I just make $3 a piece on them, I only paid like a dollar or a dollar fifty. Like they just need to go and I need to move on. But when I mean move on, I am still going to test out thread up because there have been different theories where people are marking their items up 50% of the retail price, which some customer service representatives from ThreadUp have said that you can do that and not get the $5.99 charge. However, the huge mass email that went out when this huge policy changed was 50% of ThreadUp's initial pricing. So it's hard to say, only time will tell, but I'm going to send in pieces that need liquidated and pieces that I know they mark up quite a bit, including BCBG Max Azria. So I will let you know why I picked this up. It is a sweater dress. It is cowl neck. I believe this is wool. So it is, it's a stylish piece. You know, it's like a nice shift tunic sweater dress. And like I said, it was just $1.50. Need to find the material tag, which I am not seeing. So let's know. Oh, here it is. You want to make sure that you have the material tag. So this should do well. It's 90% wool and 10% cashmere. People love their cashmere. So I am going to put, here's my little plan. I'm going to put my items that I want back. I have like an Escada suit and I have some higher end pieces like um, a suit and um, some other ones that I want back. But my other items that I'm wanting to liquidate um, I will do return assurance, but I'm not going to do expedited. So that's the plan with that. And I actually should stick that in a different pile. Okay. This next piece is another pajama top that is vintage. Now, the reason I got it is the color and the collar lace detail. So this seafoam green is absolutely gorgeous. It is like a polyester flannel. It's very soft. But this collar is amazing. It's got a little puff sleeve with lace trim detail on the sleeve as well. So it has all that going for it. Again, um, you could either knot it, but it's not super long. What I would see someone doing is tucking this into a pair of jeans. 
or pants, trousers, whatever. And all these items I'm showing you are $1.50. If I paid more than that, I will just tell you, okay? So this one I showed myself picking this up. This is a heavy knit shirling or Sherpa lined sweater vest. It is thick. Hey, Chip, can you please not shoot that, please? Okay. Thanks. Okay. There's the tag. Trudy Bears. I did not honestly even look up comps whenever I see pieces like this. I'm just going to pick it up. They can be a slower sale as any kind of vintage piece can. There is a snag here. However, I can cut the little furries and um, I have a little tool that you just push that back in. Or if you don't have a tool, like a fork, um, really anything small and some somewhat sharp that would go through there. So anyways, this is really cute. Sherpa seems to be really popular and this is like a nice knit with pockets. It's that nice um, like tan light brown color. So I would probably ask like 50 to 65 dollars for that. I know some of you think I'm crazy but the next piece I didn't check comps and I probably should have. I don't find show me or Moo um, very often but this is really pretty. It's like a caftan um kimono style well no it's not the kimono sleeve so it's just like an open front duster it's really pretty um i don't know what i will do with this piece i might it's gonna go in the back of my pile because it's spring the next item i got which needs to go into my list immediately is a vintage Sweater, I absolutely Christmas sweater. I absolutely love the screen print. It even has little snowflakes. So this will get listed probably for thirty-five dollars. And the tag has been cut, but that doesn't really matter. I have one of these. They are typically oversized. This is probably a large, if not extra large. So I'll price that for thirty-five dollars. And I always charge the buyer for shipping, so keep that in mind. The next piece. Um, I'm going to try on, but I'm more of a large. So this is a women's Carhartt hoodie. I love wearing Carhartt. It's just a quality clothing brand. Um, it's pretty popular around here. It's got the kangaroo pouch or no, technically not kangaroo. Looks kangaroo. Um, just nice. Like the color looks newish. Okay, the next one I have not looked up yet. So I'll look up when I'm editing this video just to kind of help you guys out. But it's a men's Henley sweater. Now what I mean by Henley is it's like collared. Now I don't know if Henley typically has a few buttons here. This one does not. But it's a nice burgundy color. Has the embroidery. There's the tag as co. Willie Ezco. It is a 2X made in Korea. Um, so like I said, if I find out any info about it, I will put it up on the screen for you. It also has the logo on the sleeve, so I'm not sure. What else do we have? Okay, um, this will probably be a slow sale because it is very specified, but here's the tag. So anytime that you have this kind of paper tag that's stiffer, that's an indicator that it is vintage. A lot of the modern items have the soft satin like polyester tag. So, and it's a men's cardigan. It is wool. Here's a little patch. This is why it will be a slow sale because it is directed. Is it the golf club of Portugal? Um, as far as age, I'm going to say. 70s. It is by Wilson. And what's the content? It feels like a wool boy, like acrylic and wool. No, it's 100% acrylic. Made in the USA. So I don't know what I'll list that for. Probably about $50. Unless there's comps that say higher. But okay, this I have like an 80s peach dress. It came with a belt. And I got it due to the color pattern. It's a shirt dress. Has really thin shoulder pads. 
but the belt kind of sold it for me. Um, belted shirt dresses do decent. They're kind of like secretary vibes. And I'm going to put that with spring because that's a spring color. The next one I like finding vintage Fair Isle sweaters, cardigans. They just do well based off of style. So here we have a, I'm going to say this is 90s because it's Rami or whatever um, material blend. It's a brand. Never heard of it before. It's just nice. It's got cute pockets that are slightly slanted with an interesting... I'm not sure what kind of pattern. Let me know in the comments if you know a good keyword for this. It looks like a girl and guy holding hands. It's on a sleeve. Again, um, I'll probably ask like 40 for that. It's not super old, but it looks like the pockets have a little tassel hanging from them. Here's a more modern piece. This may be Y2K, but I'm going to send this to thread up. Michael Stars retails for quite a bit. However, it doesn't resell for amazing amounts, but it looks very 90s with the turtleneck. It is very fitted to the body. Just a little sweater. Um, so I'm going to send that into thread up. Here we have an 80s nubby knit. When I mean nubby knit, um, do you see how it's almost like textured. So I would call that a nubby knit. It's like woven. Almost like, uh, reminds me of those vintage blankets that are waffle weave. Here's a tag, a Rochelle. Not like it matters a whole lot. This one's actually made in Taiwan. But do you see how it's gathered here at the waist and then oversized with a dolman um, sleeve? Almost as kind of like a balloon sleeve. And then it's got the fitted, the fitted sleeve. So this is really popular right now, especially with the neutral tones. I think this will do well. Um, I will probably list at $50. The next item I got, I looked it up really quick. Okay, so this is on a vintage Lee heavyweight tag. And it's a like a faded black hoodie. Um, it's got a perfect fade throughout, and this is actually a Canadian heavy metal band. Um, this chrono cast or clast um, is actually an album that was released in 2005. So technically this is not vintage because it's not 20 years or older, but I can list it as like either 2000s or Y2K. And it seems like item clothing from that decade is starting to have higher resale value. Um, however, I'm not very familiar with heavy metal bands. So, did a quick Google and didn't find out a whole lot. So that will probably be a slow sale, um, like $40. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, this piece is also for thread up. I, you saw it in my previous video. There is Ellie Tahari, I think there's Tahari, ASL, Arthur, Levine, something. Um, but this is just plain T Tahari. I think this is the higher end line. Correct me if I'm mistaken. But it's just a nice um, semi-structured blazer in like new condition. I think it's like a size 10. They labeled it as a large, but um, it's labeled on the blazer as a size 10. So I'm going to send that into thread up as well. This next piece, was this in the men's or the women's? Um, a lot of the vintage tags are, see how it's like creased and folded over like this? Or like this. Um, typically in the, well, several decades, but based off of this style and the wide, this is considered a widespread collar. I'm going to say that this is 60s or 70s. I will need to do more research on the brand and the tag, but how funky is that tag? Isn't that awesome? At first I thought it was a remake because it was so colorful and detailed, but pretty sure it is vintage. It's got this like geometric funky print, like clouds, tree. It, it's almost like art to wear. I have to do more research. It almost looks like it was designed by a well-known person. I'm drawing a blank at the moment, but it's pretty cool. Not sure what I'll list it for. Here we have 
something that I sell all the time for $20 to $25. Probably list this one for $25 because of the color. It's ribbed and it's really long. It's Louis LeBeau. I sell their solid colored dusters pretty quickly, usually within less than a month. Usually two weeks and they're gone. So, um, I'm going to put that in my spring pile. Here's the belt to that dress I was talking about earlier. Okay, I wish these pajamas were in my size. I love velour. It is so cozy. I wear lots of fuzzy, like Sherpa, um, polyester blanket feeling clothes right now. And it seems like a lot of other people are too. Just very comfortable. I'm not familiar with this brand and maybe nothing, but it is Wild Pearl. It's a size small. And it is a two-piece pajama set. I loved the floral and the sleeve. It was actually a bell sleeve. Very cute boho vibes. And it has the matching pants, which are just like loose, wide leg. Relaxed fit with the elastic waist. Good. They are size small as well. So I'll list them as a set. They were just $1.50, so you can't go wrong. Um, I'm going to put those in my Christmas pile because they probably should get listed sooner rather than later. Here we have a vintage Pendleton um, tweed. Is this tweed? Yeah, I would consider that tweed um, jacket. Right there is tag. This is definitely true vintage. You can see the age on the tag. And it's got the Woolrich, or not Woolrich, um, Woolmark logo let's see so certain ones certain styles will have the label right here on the inside um like the 49er you can sell i sold a 49er jacket which is the style name and it was a modern piece from a few years ago and i sold it for a hundred dollars within a day um within this last month so Pendleton is hit or miss. If you look up comps, you will see that they're super low. They're kind of all over the place. Um, but I'm going to hold out. And um, I'll probably list this for $40 to $50. The colors are really nice. So we will see. Also with Pendleton, they're known for their wool pieces. Like I think almost all the things they make are wool. Or wool blends. So you want to check for moth holes. Um, I actually looked it up because I'm like, okay, I don't know what, why do moths like to eat wool or any, um, natural fiber based clothing like camel hair, alpaca, anything like that. So I looked it up and from what I read, the larva of moths eat the hair because it has, um, Oh, what's in the hair? Keratin, I believe. And that's like what provides the nutrients to grow. So that's what they do. Interesting to know. Just a weird, odd fact. Okay, I got a couple of these. Uh, pea coats by Cabby. This is their older tag, but um, I'm just going to look up comps and see. Um, they, they do show somewhere, so I'll probably just list these, but they were so cheap. Um, you know, even if I could get $40 out of them, that's fine. Here we have a 90s men's green windbreaker jacket pullover. I have a kangaroo pouch. Or no, it's a full zip. Um, now, obviously, the more it has, the bigger swishes and spell outs of nike the more valuable this one only has a swish here um has the swish pull now if it had a big graphic on the back it would bring up its value to like 75 to 100 dollars. but this is more of a simple piece um i think i can get 40 to 50 for it if you want to look out for the vintage nike pieces that have the swoosh in the center i'm trying to think a famous rapper um, recently, like I'm talking recently, like a few months ago, wore that. And so now everyone wants a Nike swoosh in the middle. 
For some reason, it's kind of beneficial as a reseller to follow pop culture um, to see what they are wearing because that's what people want to do. They want to dress like these pop stars or celebrities. So it just kind of helps. Here is um, the brand does not matter. You see this all the time. Normally it's just Kare or Corette, however you want to pronounce that. But I got it based off of style. So this is a probably like an oversize. It's crossing over into like menswear. But this is women's double breasted striped, vertical striped blazer. I love the colors. It, it has the shoulder pads in it. Very trending. Really cute. Probably looking um, 40 to $50 for that piece. I love looking in the upper bins. So at our Goodwills, they have flat shelves on top of the clothing racks. Not all of them, but some of them. And they put like socks and all those little miscellaneous pieces. And I dig through them because you can find some awesome discontinued things, including some diabetic socks. If you go to your local store, these socks are like $20. It's a little ridiculous, and people get really attached to their socks. Now, I don't think these are super old, like, at all. I'm guessing somewhat recent, but people get attached to their socks, and I paid $2. And, you know, this will probably just be $20, but if I can get an item that's new in the package that, you know, will take me hardly any time to photograph, I don't have to measure it, I will pick it up. Um, a month ago, I think I showed you guys in a haul those compression tights that I got for like two or three dollars a piece that were new in the box and people were marking them for like 60 to 80 dollars on eBay and they weren't selling so I priced mine and I think it went on sale and I sold it for 40 sold one of them for 41 dollars this last week and so I still have two more to sell but you know live and learn live and learn um here we have First time finding APC. So I watch a lot of YouTube reseller content and I have heard of other people talking about this. Now this is a men's Henley sweater. It is a wool blend. There's the content tag. And based off of the tags, I'm going to say this is vintage, like maybe 90s. I'll do a little bit more research, but it's just a classic black sweater i did check over for moth holes you also for um wool attire you want to check for shrinking a good way to tell if a wool piece is shrunk is give the stretch test if you hear crinkling like as you stretch the fibers that means that it's shrunken now i did a year ago find a really cute anthropology cardigan that was shrunk i still bought it because it was cheap and all i did was put it in a mixture of water and hair conditioner you can stretch it after you soak in that for like so such a long period of time i can't remember i just googled it and then i rolled it into a towel and laid it flat to dry it worked so you know obviously you don't want to do it for cheap pieces but if there's some value i will definitely take the time to stretch a piece back out here is another vintage kind of bolo it doesn't it's not huge money, but this is Kappa. Um, here's their logo. Pretty big in the 90s. Um, this does show a little bit of wear. If you can see the pilling, I'm going to take my sweater shaver to it. But I got it because it's got the Italy patch. And on the back, it says Italia. I'm guessing this was um, maybe a tourist piece. I don't know. I'm not all familiar with Kappa. I've sold a few of their pieces and they go really quick. I'm just trying to see where it was made. It's made in India. So, yeah, I did a quick Google and I could not find anything similar with this on the back. So, I can't tell you what I will sell it for. I'll put it up in the corner um, if I find anything else out. But I'm guessing about $50. You also saw this in my Thrift With Me. It is a mock neck nautical patriotic sweater sweatshirt actually love all the details including the buttons this is adorable i would totally wear it what size is it here's the brand 
But again, brands do not matter. It's based off of style and fabric content. It's a large, and I would say it fits true to size, maybe a medium. It depends how you want to wear it. Okay, we are down to one smaller size bag, so we're getting near the end. I know I've been a little chatty today. Okay, I also showed you this in a thrift with me on the rack. Now, do you see how large that is? Larger sizes, you know, they sell faster. Typically, and this is camel hair. It looks kind of like wool. It's itchy like wool. And this one is made in Mong Mongolia. Yeah, Mongolia, which is interesting. I don't think I found a piece that's made in Mongolia before. So... It almost looks reversible because there is no exposed seams or stitching, but obviously you'd want to remove the tag that says it's made with camel hair. But it's got just like some regular pockets. I'll do more research on it, but the fact that it's camel hair, again, with these, uh, this material, you want to check for moth holes. But I did not see any. However, when I go to photograph items, that's typically when I find flaws, but don't be discouraged. You can still list your flawed items. They do sell. Just make sure you're completely honest. You show pictures and you put it in your description. A lot of times in the title, at the end of it, I will put flaw in all capital letters. So I got this one based off of style. This is an 80s polyester made in the USA. Um, blouse has the buttons all down the front. I absolutely loved the floral and animal print combination. It is a larger size. It's tagged to size 14, but I would guess it's a modern large if you don't wear it oversized. Really cute. I will probably ask $40 for that piece. Here we have the other cabby pea coat that I was talking about. Just a nice plaid. This one is double breasted. An easy $40 probably. And then we have another Pendleton piece, which I showed in my other video liked the colors. I'm going to put this in my Christmas pile because this looks like a good holiday piece. That's gross. Lint. Um, there is the tag. Just classic. Again, you want to look inside for any style tags. I don't see that. So this may be a slower sale, but I don't pay up for Pendleton um, unless it's a certain style and I always do the research if I'm paying up for an item. This piece is going to thread up. It's Michael by Michael Kors. It is a beautiful wrap dress. Wrap dresses in general do well even if it's a not um, a well-known brand. It is also new with tags. Where'd it go? I think it's a good size too. Yes, it's a size 12. So the fact it's new with tags, it's a size 12. I looked it over closely because this polyester spandex material um, snags and it is you know, pretty visible, but I did not see any flaws. I did pay up, they had it marked at $8.55 and um, so it was half off. So I paid four, like four twenty seven or whatever. But I'm gonna send the end to thread up. One last piece guys, and this is also another modern piece. I did not check comps, but it was just $1.50. It is an extra small, which usually are slower sales, but it's um, Adidas with the three stripe tray foil logo tends to sell better and for more money. There's the tag and there you guys have it. Um, I think, yeah, so this one was marked at $6.43, so that means it would have been half off. So I paid three, like three dollars and twenty cents for it. So I hope you enjoy this haul. I spent a total of like seventy two dollars, which is actually really good for all these items that I showed you. So I hope you enjoyed. Have a safe and happy holiday for whenever you watch this. If you are watching this at a later date, it's November twenty fifth, twenty twenty. All right, have a thrift delicious day guys. Bye.